it's been about a week since I finished my last 2021 mystery quilt block from Laundry Basket Quilts, and I think I'm finally ready to start piecing my blocks together. I just need to cut my four and a half inch squares, and then I can start sewing my rows together. But first, I'd like to start with a little disclaimer. If you don't like the way that my quilt turned out, please, please, please don't let it discourage you from making a 2021 mystery quilt of your own. I'd just say use my quilt as an opportunity to think about what you would have done differently or what you would improve on. Like maybe you didn't like the blue and white or maybe you might prefer more traditional fabrics. Uh, just take some notes and hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and make a really great quilt. One great thing about quilting is that only one person has to love the quilt, right? Either you or the person who will be receiving the quilt. So you are only actually trying to please one person. So if my quilt doesn't appeal to anyone else, I can remember I made it for one person. In this case, that person is my mom. And as long as she's happy with it, I know I've done a good job. This is the fabric I need to cut up into my four and a half inch squares. I also made a copy of the finished quilt so that I can sort of check off the blocks as I go. And there's my mess of, a, of an organizational system. It's not too bad. It could be better. Okay, my squares are cut. I ended up getting 12 squares from each fat quarter because if you remember from my block 12 video, I used these to make sort of a scrappy block. And here are my scraps. So I really used up as much as I possibly could. This was just barely too small to get another um, few blocks out of. Now I get to figure out how to piece this thing. I almost forgot, before I start piecing, I wanted to answer a couple commenter questions I got from my block 12 video. Deborah wanted to know what size triangle paper I used, and I only ever used the two inch finished Hasquare triangle units, and it worked out great. I didn't need any other sizes, and I really, really wish I'd been able to start using it sooner. Also, quick note, always make sure to check your um, guide right here so it should measure out at one by one inch and that can change based on like printer settings and stuff they might smush it one way or the other and then your pieces wouldn't be accurate I also recently learned that the fat quarter shop also has triangle paper and I'm pretty sure that um, Edita is using her own personal laundry basket quilt triangle paper in her how-to videos so I'll try to leave a link in the description for you for all of those different places in case you want to try them out. And I'm also going to link this free paper, um, but again, I don't know who posted it. It's a download at your own risk sort of thing. Carol wanted to know how I keep my pieces even, and for me that comes down to three things. First, before I cut or sew or anything, I prep my fabric using Mary Ellen's Best Press. I apply it using one of these mister bottles and it gives a nice even uh, spray on your fabric and it keeps your fabric from warping and stretching. I love this stuff, really great. And you only have to use it once at the beginning and then every time you press afterwards, you get a nice crisp press, nice crisp block. I love it. Great stuff. Then next it comes down to accurate cutting and for me, that means using um, these nice skinny lines whenever possible and not relying on my cutting mat at all. It also means that I need to keep my um, cutting sessions short because I, when I get bored, I cut corners and I start to get lazy and then my um, cutting gets less and less accurate as I go. So short sessions, tiny lines, ignore the mat. And then finally, this will be familiar to you by now, I think. It's my seam guide. And I like this one because it's got this um, 
lip that you can bump your fabric up to and you can almost like just feel as you go instead of having to rely on your eyes as much which mine aren't that great sometimes and I know it says that this is for a scant quarter inch seam allowance but if you move your um, needle to the left you can sort of adjust what width you end up getting so I recommend this I haven't found anything better yet but I I'm on the lookout for something that's maybe a little more um, permanent something that doesn't wear out and I don't have to reapply all the time I also want to share a great tip I got in my comments a few weeks ago Debbie says she uses double-sided tape for a seam guide and um, she makes cuts along the top and bottom of the bobbin case so that it's easier to change your bobbin and so I stole her wonderful idea and it's made um, bobbin changes so much easier and I think it will extend the life of this seam guide because it won't be unsticking on these two ends constantly. So thanks Debbie, I really appreciate the tip, it's working great. I think I've mentioned before that I don't have a design wall, but I haven't actually told you what I've been working with. So I have a table here that's about 47 inches wide, and I have a work area of about 24 inches deep. And then behind that is a collection of tools I use a lot and a knockoff uh, little storage unit. So I'm going to be working on half a row at a time, four at a time. I'm going to use my trusty circle labels here and each row will be a different color and on the odd number rows I'm going to label the odd number um, blocks and on the even number rows I'm going to label the even number blocks. So it's going to look like this. Now I'm going to use my little quilt clips and pair my pieces together. And I'm not going to worry about getting them perfectly lined up. I'm just using these for organization. Now it's finally time to do some sewing. Okay, I've prepped a new bobbin and I've done a bunch of um, test stitches to make sure that my tension is correct because my cats can't be trusted. They climb all over the sewing machine. I probably need some sort of sewing machine cozy or something. Maybe that's a future project. One thing I want to mention is I've been moving my needle to the left so that it's uh, 2.5 millimeters, I think it's millimeters, um, of a stitch width. But I'm for today, I'm going to be using a scant quarter inch in an attempt to save as many of my points as possible. all of my stitched together blocks and now it's time to reassemble them in their rows and I remember that red is the first row green is the second yellow is the third and blue is the fourth so let's see how how helpful these little labels are
everything's looking good so far. Time to move on to the next step. I just have one more seam for each row and then I can start on the second half. I finished the first half of these four rows and now I've got to do it all again for the second half. Instead of watching me do all that again, let's just skip ahead to when I sew the two halves together. Okay, we've got some finished rows here. So that's four rows down. I think I have 11 more to go. So I'm going to try to finish those all this evening, and then I'll start again tomorrow by uh, pressing, and then finally sewing my rows together. I actually managed to finish sewing my rows last night. I had some doubts about halfway through, but they're done and they're great. Today I'm starting by pressing my seams. The odd rows I'm pressing to the left and the even rows I'm pressing to the right. And then after I'm done, I'm about halfway through, after I'm done pressing, I'm going to do just a little bit of glue basting and then I'll see you at the machine. Well, the glue basting took much longer than I was expecting, but now finally I get to start sewing. I've pressed and I have to admit I was going to press all these seams open but I didn't have time for that <laughs> so I just sort of okay this is a big confession I just let them fall where they wanted to fall my quilt back is gonna be an absolute mess but I won't have gone insane pressing it so that's a plus I think this is my favorite stage of quilting is when it, it actually starts looking like a quilt. You get those first few rows together. So I'm just going to keep going like that, adding section by section and pressing like a mad woman, and then I'll eventually have a finished top. Let's skip ahead to the finished top. You don't need to see me sew another straight line, I don't think. There are a few things I want to talk about before I reveal my finished quilt top. And first of all, Aditta, thank you so much for the 2021 mystery quilt. I had such a great time. There were a few stressful days, but overall it was just a really, really positive experience and I enjoyed it so much. And I especially want to thank you for providing us with this gorgeous free pattern. And I want to thank you for coaching us along the way. Um, I think I never would have attempted a quilt like this without your help and generosity. So, Aditta, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I can't wait for next year. I also want to mention 
I am so glad I used a scant quarter inch when I pieced my rows, and I'll tell you why. It was these pesky square and a square blocks. I either just barely kept these points or I just barely lost them. And I think I would have lost every single one if I had used just a regular um, standard quarter inch seam allowance. So scant quarter inch, great idea. I'm gonna brag about that for a little bit. I want to also tell you what I would have done differently if I had this quilt to do again. And one of those is um, when it comes to my light fabric, I think I would use just one overall um, light fabric, just one print, just to make it a little more cohesive because my blue fabrics are kind of crazy. Um, or maybe just a couple different prints, but I, I think I would limit the variety in my light fabrics. And I mentioned a little bit, but I think I would tone down some of my um, blue fabrics. Some of them were very busy. Um, they didn't blend in quite as well as I was hoping. Um, I, I regret this, this print right here. But other than that, I think... I'm not to brag, but I, I'm pretty, I'm happy with what I got. Now, as far as my finishing plans go, I think I'm going to do a nice big um, oversized border. I'm thinking like, you know, eight or nine inches, real big to really bulk up this quilt. Also, I said in a previous video that I was not going to hand quilt this, but I was getting some hints from my mom that she really would like a hand quilted quilt. So, and it's not like, you know, she's going to be able to use it anytime soon. So I have a loose, um, a loose due date of finishing this quilt before it gets cold enough to use it. So I have a good summer project to work on and that should be fun. I like hand quilting, but I know you guys are really here to see the finished quilt top. So here it is. Thank you for joining me on my 2021 mystery quilt adventure. <laughs> um, if you liked these videos, will you do me a favor and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. So far, I've been filming any random idea that pops into my head, but I'd love to know what you want to see so I can make some more focused content. I'll see you again soon. Bye!